Does the existence of suffering and injustice and evil, does that demonstrate that there is no God? That depends on how you define a god. If a god is, by definition, both all-loving and all-powerful, and if we are to assume that such a god does not view suffering per se as a good thing, then yes, the existence of suffering does demonstrate that no such being exists. I know many people, when they open the newspapers or turn on the television news, and they see some terrible example of suffering, I mean, this week it's Aleppo, next week it's Somalia, next week after that will be somewhere else. Does the existence of suffering prove there is no God? Well, I want you to notice something. The moment that we look at some situation in the world and say that ought not to be allowed, that ought not be the case, that very ought that we smuggle into that value judgment is a problem if there is no God. When I look at the scenes coming out of Aleppo as I film this video, and I say that ought not to be allowed, I'm implying that there's a way the world ought to be, and this isn't it. But isn't that interesting? Because if we live in a godless universe where everything is just atoms and particles knocking together, well, there is no ought. There simply is. And that ought that we've used there, that value judgment, is entirely invalid. Apologists commonly respond to the problem of evil by arguing that if there is no God, then there is no standard of good or evil, and you therefore can't say that our God's negligence is evil. However, when counter-apologists point out that suffering exists, we are not saying that your God defies our standards of benevolence. We point it out because it shows that your God does not live up to his own standards of benevolence. Now that's certainly a philosophical approach to the question of suffering, but here's the interesting thing. The more I've reflected on this question over the years, the more I've come to appreciate that what most of us want when it comes to suffering and injustice are not words. We don't just want a clever answer. We want something done about suffering and injustice. If an all-powerful being exists, I don't just want something done about suffering. I want something to have been done to prevent suffering from ever having existed in the first place. I don't just want it to stop. I don't want such a being to make it up to me later. I want it to never have existed ever. And that's why as human beings, we get so excited about things like compassion, uh, for instance. That's a quality we admire in one another. But think about the word compassion for a moment. Have you ever noticed what it, what it means, how it's put together? The word compassion is two Latin words, com, that means with, and passion, that means suffer. And compassion basically means to suffer alongside. And that's actually the difference between suffering and empathy. If I'm walking down the, uh, the street and I see a homeless person sleeping in a shop doorway on a, rainy, on a rainy cold night, and I look at them and I go, oh, you know, homelessness is wrong. In fact, I turn to the other crowds on the street and I go, homelessness is wrong. And then I walk on by and I, I've done nothing. Or maybe I've been empathic. Maybe I've made a political point, but I haven't been compassionate because I haven't done anything. Or perhaps you're a student walking across university campus. You see one student being racially abused by a gang of six bullies and you call out to everyone else in the plaza, you know, racism is wrong. Well, you haven't been compassionate. You haven't done anything. You've been a moralizer. How would you be compassionate? Well, the homeless person, despite the fact it wrecks your plans for the evening, you take that person out, you buy them a meal, you find them a bed for the night. Maybe you even invite them back to sleep in your spare room in your flat because you can't find anything else. Now you've been compassionate because it's cost you. This dude seems to think that there's some law of conservation of suffering. He seems to think that the only way to relieve another person's suffering is to take some of that suffering upon oneself. Suppose a person enjoys helping the homeless and the satisfaction they get from helping them is of greater value than the resources they spend. Helping out hasn't cost them anything, because they have, in a sense, profited from it. This person would not fit Andy's definition of compassionate, but you couldn't say that they did nothing about someone else's suffering. Or you see the student being racially abused, and you don't just call that racism is wrong, you run across, you wade in, you separate the bullies from the victim, even though you may get seven kinds of hell kicked out of you, because there's more of them than there are of you, now you've been compassionate, because it has cost you, you have suffered alongside. Well, we recognize that in human beings, that to respond to suffering, you can't just use words, you have to do something. So what about God and suffering? Well, that raises the screaming question, doesn't it? What has God done about suffering? Not enough. Unless he sees suffering as some inherent good or is indifferent toward it, he is either not all-powerful or not all-loving if he has not prevented suffering from ever being possible in the first place. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard, but I do have a Patreon.